Thank you for taking the time to join us here at Blacks and Technology. My name is Dennis Schultz. I'm the Executive Director for uh, the Blacks and Technology Foundation. And we are an organization dedicated to the promotion and advancement of Black men and women in the tech industry. If you are looking for a role in tech or if you're currently a technologist working in the field of um, IT, uh, you found your home. Uh, we encourage you to join us as members. Our membership is free and the website to join is foundation.blacksintechnology.net. Uh, we have a bunch of free resources, discounted uh, certifications and products. So uh, not a bad way to um, spend a two minutes of your day to, uh, to join us and uh, get involved. Uh, I like to welcome the Tanium team here. Uh, we're going to find out a little bit about what their organization does, uh, the open opportunities they have, and how you could potentially become part of their squad. And I'll let Stephanie introduce uh, the entire cast that's uh, on as our panelists and a little bit about the company. So Stephanie, it's all yours. Great. Thank you, Dennis. All right, so thanks everyone here for joining us today. My name is Stephanie Aceves. I am one of the folks, uh, one of the many folks that are here from the Tanium team. So I wanna start us off by going in into introductions before we talk a little bit about what Tanium is. So my name is Stephanie Aceves. I'm one of the directors of technical account management here at Tanium. I've been with the company for just over two and a half years, and my primary focus right now is on building out Tanium's presence in Latin America. My background is heavy in cybersecurity, so prior to this, I was on the external facing red team at EY and have some experience doing digital forensics and incident response. I'm going to hand it off to the next one on the, the sheet, and that's Tom. Hello, everyone. My name is Tom Williams, and I am a federal lead and integrations engineer here at Tanium within our enterprise services organization. I know that's kind of wordy and lengthy. I, I wear multiple hats. I've um, been with Tanium since December of last year, so I'm coming up on my first year anniversary. Uh, prior to joining Tanium, I was a principal cyber systems engineer for Northrop Grumman. I spent a good chunk of my career in the public sector with, with a background in data center systems management, operations, and offensive security. We'll My go audio ahead. come through okay. Yeah, no, you're good, Tom. All right, um, Jeff, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, my name's uh, Jeffrey Maxson. Um, I've been with Tanium, uh, it'll be two years in February. Um, prior to that, I have an extensive background in uh, operations, uh, server management, exchange. I've kind of done everything, been the jack of all trades. Um, I got my degree in computer science and um, it's been a great transition from the uh, private sector. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Kofi? All right. Hey, hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? My name is Kofi Asarifi. I am a Associate of Technical Account Management here at Tanium. Um, I've been here approximately uh, a year and a half now. Um, great times. Uh, my background, uh, I was an infrastructure engineer at a company called Cabbage based here in Atlanta. Um, and I focused uh, basically on our, our Mac deployments um, there. And uh, I'm happy to be here. Love Tanium. Great company. Um, yeah. So. Thanks for having me. All right, John. Hey everyone, uh, my name is John Thomas. I've been at Tanium for about two and a half years. I'm a senior security engineer here. Um, before that, I came out of the SaaS space. Uh, if you've ever taken yoga classes, Pilates, things like that, you may have come across a company called MindBody. Uh, that's where I spent several years before. Before that, I did a lot of um, pen testing. I uh, worked in uh, the uh, Healthcare sector for a while, security engineer for doctors, offices, hospitals, things like that. Uh, came over to Tanium to do more engineering stuff and have had an absolute blast so far. So, looking forward to telling you all about it later on. Great. Thanks, John. So, Kiana, I know could not join today. I wanted to introduce Marissa. Morning, everyone. My name is Marissa Villalobos. I've been with Tanium now for uh, just over a year and a half, uh, and I am a recruiter for the enterprise services team, same team that Tom's on. 
uh, my background, I've been recruiting in cybersecurity and just technology overall for 11 years now. And I'm excited to tell you about the opportunities later on in the presentation. Perfect, thanks, Marissa. All right, Bella, go ahead and jump to the next slide for me, please. Thanks. So kind of want to start before we get into what Tanium is um, and give you all an explanation of what today is going to look like during this webinar. So, you know, you've heard a little bit about of our, each of our backgrounds. I'm going to give us a brief overview of what Tanium is as a product and as a company. And then we're going to really get into the fun part, in my opinion, and that's where we're going to have some more stories um, and some personal expertise and personal stories from some of um, the folks on the call. And then we're going to jump into additional opportunities that we have here at Tanium, um, whether it's in ESO, whether it's in SecOps, um, whatever, you know, we, we run the gamut of things. We are a technology company and we play in both operations and security. So Blacks in Tech is, is a perfect, um, you know, positioning for us because technology, as you all know, is very broad. So that being said, if you do have questions, we are paying attention to the chat a panel. Um, so go ahead and put any of your questions, comments in that chat window and we'll bring them up. Uh, we really enjoy having these be more of a dialogue. So we encourage you to, to ask questions as you see fit. So what does Tanium do? So Tanium is, has been around for just over 12 years and um, we were actually founded by the same father and son duo that created Big Fix. If you've heard of Big Fix, um, Big Fix is a tool that helps with operations, helps with patch management, things like that. And so what the founders of Tanium did was after selling Big Fix, they took some time, they spent about five years doing R&D, and they, they really tried to change what was currently existing in the market, right? They recognized that the biggest companies in the world had problems with visibility and control of endpoints. And those terms have transformed into some flashy kind of thing, but technically that what they realized is companies did not know what was on their environment, what existed on those machines. And if they did get that information, it was typically pretty, um, you know, it, there was some lag in and some, some, there was a lag in the amount of time it took for them to obtain that information, right? So it was never that real time data. So they spent about five years in R&D and created something that we call our linear chain architecture. And as a result of that architecture, we've been able to build products on top of this platform that really help the largest organizations in the world with that visibility and control. So we're talking discovery of assets, um, asset inventory and management, compliance, whether it's on vulnerability scanning or configuration compliance with regulatory boards. Um, we also help in the, the different spaces of operation. So patching OSs, patching applications that run on top of the OS. Um, and then heading into security and risk, we can help with, um, you know, we provide folks with proprietary Intel that um, comes directly with Tanium. We also provide folks with a way to scan for existing Intel types, things like OpenIOC, Sticks, Yara. So, Tanium really is a platform and we have uh, expertise at the company in each of these different domains. And I think you'll hear a little bit more about some of the, the benefits of working at Tanium. I think working with some of the best in class in each of these different domains has been one of my favorite parts. And I know that, um, you know, that the other folks on the call will agree. Bella, will you jump to the next slide, please? All right. So giving you all a little bit more context about Tanium specifically as a technology. What you see in the market today is you'll traditionally see a lot of different siloed tool sets, right? So I mentioned all these different domains that Tanium plays in, whether it's patch management, compliance, um, asset discovery, asset inventory. And traditionally what that looks like is a separate tool, a separate agent on each endpoint, different teams that are managing these tool sets and you end up having a very fragmented view of your environment right you have to make sure that your you have um rationalization of all the information that's coming in you need to make sure that on the people side of the house that your teams are communicating and it tends to get pretty complicated pretty quickly and we as tanium have decided that this is not the way to go as you can see in a number of different industries, this kind of holistic platform approach tends to 
um, typically make the most impact in different industries in the sense that a unified platform approach is going to provide holistic visibility. It provides inherent communication in between teams and is going to improve the security hygiene overall of an organization. Now, for those of you that have been in the tech space for a while, security hygiene may not sound super Super exciting, but I promise you it, it really is. Um, you know, as an organization, when you start talking about security hygiene, it often comes hand in hand with talking about risk. And risk translates into financial loss a lot of times. So Tanium really helps address these problems before they arise. Um, having a background in security, I know that the fun part maybe is the investigation and the hacking. And as an organization, that's not fun to you. That costs a lot of money. So Tanium's approach is let's fix things before they become issues um, so that if you do need that coverage, we're here to help as well. But we're also gonna make sure that you are eating your Wheaties every morning to make sure you're nice and strong before the attackers can, can have their go. Go ahead and next slide, please, Bella. All right, so I mentioned that our founders created a proprietary um, architecture. This is patented and it's called the linear chain technology, right? What you see on the screen is not that, this is the traditional way of doing things. So what we typically have is a centralized server that connects to relay servers. And those relay servers are gonna form point to point connections with every endpoint under management. So to give you all some context, st stepping back, right? Um, let's talk about, for example, vulnerability management. If you need to run a scan to see if your machines are vulnerable to the latest zero day, Typically what that looks like is you have an application server that is where you're gonna log in as the user that's in charge of the scan. You log in and you're gonna kick off the action and essentially what's gonna happen is that it's gonna to go to the relay servers and then the relay servers are one at a time, gonna to connect to every single point under management, do their port scanning, do whatever it is that they need to do. This ends up causing a lot of lag in organizations. So you have lag on the side of network latency, um, you have bandwidth concerns, bandwidth consumption concerns. You also have the overhead cost of supporting this infrastructure, right? So are you putting, um, you know, budget towards keeping the lights on in these data centers? Do you have uh, the right team to manage these, these servers? If you can imagine, if you're already trying to, um, if you're having trouble patching your environment, are you actually patching these relay servers? Things like that, right? So there's a lot of overhead cost in supporting an architecture like this, and it's not as scalable as it could be. Next slide, please. So what we have done at Tanium is uh, we created the linear chain technology, right? Uh, the linear chain architecture. Essentially with a single Tanium server, um, very limited Tanium infrastructure or limited application infrastructure, you're able to support up to a million endpoints in that one environment. And we actually get faster the more endpoints you have, which sounds counterintuitive and I promise you it's not a lie. Um, and that's because essentially what's going on is the endpoints are uh, communicating across the land, right? So I typically explain it as, um, you know, endpoints gossiping amongst each other and sharing information and sharing questions. So let's talk about briefly um, how this actually, Kofi's going to give us a, a short demonstration as well of Tanium. So I'm going to have him kind of go into more detail about how that works and how information is pulled. Um, you can see here as well, the kind of four major domains that Tanium plays in. And this is gonna be ops, operations management. So this is your asset inventory, asset identification, asset visibility as well, security hygiene. And these are your fun, more proactive um, parts of security. So again, you don't wanna be playing whack-a-mole. It's not always fun to be having to respond to incidents. So this is where it comes into compliance, scanning, configuration compliance, um, making sure that you're monitoring certain file systems um, that are required by different regulatory boards. And then we get to the uh, part that should hopefully not be consuming too much of your organization's time and that's detection and response. Next slide, please. Um, the way that Tanium sells, so we'll cover this briefly because we are not selling to you, but we um, are here obviously to kind of get you all excited about Tanium. Um, so that you can come and join our world-class team. Uh, so unified endpoint management and unified endpoint security. Traditionally, the way that companies are seeing 
security hygiene or just IT in general is there's a segmentation still between ops and security. A lot of that happens just based on how the organization is structured, but a lot of it too comes down to budget. And so the way that we typically play as a, a vendor and as a product in this space is we sell the platform and then you'll typically see our customers choosing to start with maybe the endpoint management team, which is your ops, your patching, your more um, operational side, or they'll start with the endpoint security team. Maybe they start with risk and compliance and then they um, continue in with our more EDR type products. Um, and then our more mature customers are going to be playing in both spaces because there are integrations that exist between the different modules to allow for that holistic visibility. Next slide, please. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off and kind of disappear here for a bit for Kofi, who's going to go ahead and give us a demo. Hey, Stephanie, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, so I'm going to give you all a demo. I'm going to share my screen and just Somebody give me a, a heads up, a hands up if you see it. Can you see my screen okay? Good to go. All right, perfect. So um, to touch on what Stephanie stated earlier, Tanium is a platform, right? Uh, what we've done is we've gone ahead and replatformized uh, the endpoint space, right? So uh, to give you a quick idea of what we do and how we do what we do, right? I'll, I'll give you a quick demo. Uh, at a previous employer, I had a lot of issues just gathering some things like how many endpoints did I have, um, the names of these endpoints. And with Tame, I can quickly ask that question and then from there um, get an answer back to be able to pivot from. So this demo environment has about a thousand machines. Uh, and what you'll see here is these questions will come back in real time and tell us, all right, hey, out of all the, the, the devices in my environment, what are their names, right? So we'll give it a second to respond. There we go, perfect. So um, you're seeing 97% you're seeing because out of the 100% the of machines that are online right now, we're able to get uh, a quick answer back from 97. And we may have some that are turning on or that are, that are um, in a different space and should be returning an answer here shortly. So this is a, a simple, simple question, right? But what if I wanted to get some additional information, right? This is coming from a, a thousand machines. Um, the thing is, this this the speed at which this comes back does not change, uh, even with a hundred thousand machines, a million machines, right? So let's say I wanted to ask a more complex question. Uh, let's start with installed applications from all of the computers in my environment um, with let's see, a operating system contains Windows, right? I need to find out from all my devices in my environment. Um, that are Windows machines, right? What applications do I have installed? Now, when you type something in, our, na our natural language parser is gonna say, all right, hey, let me gather this information for you. And it doesn't matter where the person is or where the endpoint is. That endpoint can be in the cloud. Uh, it can be a slow link, especially when you think of, of, of COVID right now, right? A lot of people are working from home. So we're able to answer this and get the answer back in, setting, in, in, in seconds. Now. This is the same, um, the same core, uh, core capabilities that you'll see um, that, that isn't matched anywhere else, right? So what we've done and where our competition sits is we have built solutions. You'll see these modules right here. We have built solutions on top of this platform, right? So um, a lot of the, the platforms designed before um, were typically built um, and they did not account for virtualization, mobility, um, any you know cloud computing, etc. So um, if they've fa they've fallen behind, right? And more times than not, you'll often see that there's multiple endpoint uh, solutions. So you have one to take care of compliance management, one to take care of patching, another one to take care of of you know whatever uh, other solutions that you require for your for uh, a customer's environment. So with Tan, we have built we have built that on top, built all these solutions on top of our existing uh, uh, platform, and we're able to make sure that uh, we take care of of these machines at speed and at scale, and provide control and visibility with that. So uh, I'll dive into one of these modules and give you an idea as to what that looks like. So uh, while while this is pulling, I'm going to ask a question, um, and this is a very common one, common thing that we see. 
let's say I plug my my Mac in or you know uh, a friend's computer into the the Ethernet port at your office, right? Or let's say even at home, right? How long will it take you to notice that it's been connected? Even even more so, what would you be able to do about it? Can you take action on that machine? So what we have here is what we're looking at is we are looking at discover, right? And we find out that a lot of our, um, a lot of organizations, a lot of, of, of uh, enterprises are really concerned about ninjas dropping through the, the skylight and you know, they're, they have on their, their hacker hats and they are taking advantage of your system and you don't know it, right? When a lot of the, the breaches and the things that we see come from the front door, right? Your front door is wide open. The answer is, if you don't know what is on your environment, how are you supposed to secure your environment, right? If you don't know who's there, who's coming next, right? How are you able to make sure that um, that your, your environment is secure? So what we have here is looking at all of our interfaces, we are able to, to, to find and discover assets in a very unique way. What we're doing is we are using the assets themselves to tattletale in their space and find out, all right, well, who's next to me? Who's in this area, right? And you're able to quickly find out, right? Okay, maybe this machine doesn't belong here. Um, and I can gather the, the MAC address. I can gather the IP address. Um, ports, I can find out the, the OS manufacturer. Um, I can find out all this information. I can potentially label it. If I need to quarantine a device, I can do that. Um, if there's uh, any issues where, uh, you know, the device falls out of management, or it gets lost, right? So we had the um, we had the Tanium client installed on the endpoint, and for some reason it's not installed anymore. Somebody may have deleted it. We are able to find that and then take that information and push it back uh, uh, to our end users, so we, they can have a quick idea as to what's going on in their environment. Now, just to be be sure that we have this understanding, this is not another endpoint agent. This isn't something new. This is not something in addition. We're not adding something else on, on top of it, right? We are simply gathering information and being able to, to do this with that same, with that same uh, endpoint agent. So this isn't something else on top of it, right? Now, as, as important as it is for us to be able to gather real-time information, it's also super important for us to have historical information, right? Uh, so what I can do is bounce over here to our asset module and I can list out historically all of our assets in our environment. I can say, all right, hey, uh, we have you know about 1,500 uh, assets that have that we've seen. Um, I can dive in and take a look at users. Um, let's say I want to take a look at um, Clara. So let's take a look at Clara. With this, I can quickly tell you, all right, hey, these are all the machines that that Clara has access to. These, uh, this is some information as to her endpoint. Um, what installed applications does she have, right? Um, what network adapters uh, is she, does she have on her machine? And like in the event that you are looking to reclaim software licenses, um, decommission hardware, uh, any type of audits that you may be coming up with or, or a true up, we are able to help you find that information and report on it, getting some true and accurate fresh inventory uh, for, for those reports, um, for what you're trying to do. In addition, let's say we're just looking for something specific. Um, I need to find out how Photoshop is doing my environment, right? Or I need to find out how many instances of Microsoft Office do I have, right? I can gather this information uh, from Windows, Mac, Linux, um, uh, Solaris, AIX, and take this and enrich us a current CMDB that I have in my environment. Now, this, like I said, once again, this is allowing you to gather that information, right? Let's take a look at all right, who's using OneDrive in my environment? I can tell you all of that information out of quickness without having to be concerned uh, about installing, uh, once again, another um, endpoint agent to be able to make, uh, to make changes to. So this is all using the single platform and being able to dive in further from that, right? Now, uh, like I said, this is a quick high level, so I'm gonna show you just a, another one of our modules, but, um, we have, a lot of our customers have entire teams designed simply for creating packages, deploying packages, maintaining packages, making sure that they're up to date, making sure that there's no vulnerabilities with these packages, right? 
And here at Tainan, we have a package gallery that allows you to deploy to your endpoints, right? So I said, all right, hey, um, you know, I have, I want to install Notepad++, right? Or uh, we've seen a recent Google Chrome zero day that came in. I can tell you before I even install it on the endpoint, which machines are eligible for this device. I mean, are, are eligible for this package, right? Um, and so I can, these are commonly installed applications that we see a lot of corporations, right? We have Zoom, which we're using right now. I can install this across the environments um, at speed and scale. And I can tell you, I can uh, tell you, all right, hey, these users have uh, officially received this um, this machine. So we, um, this uh, application. So we've allowed, we've created that. And then in addition, I can tell you, do I need to install it? Do I need to update it? Do I need to remove this? We have different uh, uh, op operations that we can perform with deploy. Let's say you have a team of people. I need to, the, the engineering team to have a set of applications, right? If I can group those machines together, I can tell you, all right, hey, these, uh, these endpoints require, um, they need a Microsoft Silverlight. I need them to have Wireshark. If I have um, a marketing team, I need to make sure that they have Photoshop, they have Illustrator. We can create all of these bundles via Tanium and, and be able to push that out and make sure that all these, these um, all of the, the applications are installed. All right, let's say I don't want to have to do all of this, right? I can actually have a self-service client. So this self-service client will go ahead and install these applications on, on these machines. If I let's say today I need Photoshop, tomorrow I don't. I want to install it and I want to remove it. I have that option to do that here with our self-service uh, client by also selecting uh, from the catalog that we have here. So to touch back on what Stephanie was saying earlier, uh, this is how we do it, right? You have you have a plethora of, of old point solutions that have this exact diagram, this exact architecture, right? You have a primary server with multiple relay servers. Um, and if one of these relay servers, servers goes down, you no longer have access to these two endpoints, right? Or you have to wait for them to be, to be available, th this relay server to be available to be able to gather that information. Same thing with another relay server. And so these machines are not communicating. If you have devices that are on a remote network, you also run the risk of not being able to communicate with them because they cannot see, um, they cannot see the primary server uh, due to these, these relay servers. So I'm gonna give you a, a, a challenge, right? I need to deploy a package to two locations in my business and what's the best way to do it, right? Well, I can send it to this machine and this machine can send it to this machine and this machine and then another machine, right? Or with Tanium, what we've done is we've simplified it, right? I have a primary Tanium server that communicates with these devices on the local area network, and it sends the package one time to one of the machines, and then that machine go, goes ahead and distributes it uh, via small little chunks, right? And then if this machine number eight requires um, requires that package, it basically says, all right, hey, do you have this file? Do you have this file? Do you have this piece? Do you have that piece? It gathers that information and is able to um, gathers that information and is able to um, to put it together by itself, right? And that way, it's not reaching back and forth to the Tanium server um, to to grab that, right? Uh, and, and the same thing applies for for uh, the Zone server, right? I, I have machines. I have people working at Starbucks. People are working from home. People aren't in the office, right? I can gather information from those machines. They are not lost. They are not. We are not limited in in, in that uh, regard. We can gather information from machines that are anywhere. So the, the advantage with Tanium is you are able to maintain visibility and control no matter where a machine lives, no matter where it sits, right? And you're able to gather that information quickly. Um, and at, like I said, at a very high level, this is what Tanium does and this is what Tanium does very well that our, our competition does not. So uh, I'm gonna pass it back to Stephanie. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to write them in the chat. Uh, please send, uh, feel free to send us emails uh, and we'll be able to, to get, make sure it's you're taken care of. Thanks, Kofi. All right, now to give some kind of real world story around this, I'm gonna have Jeff go ahead and explain um, one of like his kind of war stories before he came to Tanium. Jeff. Hello, um, so uh, when I introduced myself, I forgot to tell everyone, I've worked at a number of Fortune 100 companies, you know, from E-Trade to Home Depot, 
um, some really big, big companies. So I also, prior to coming to Tanium, was a uh, consultant for a Microsoft Gold partner. And um, some of these scenarios that I'm about to talk about come back from these from this experience. So um, I was in the office one day, got a call from a major client that had about 50,000 endpoints and they were using um, Microsoft uh, Windows Defender as their antivirus solution. And um, they were seeing that machines were compromised by a new virus. So um, I went to that company, started reviewing around as many of you know, there are freeware tools provided by Symantec, McAfee, which um, they update on a regular basis and doesn't require the install. So again, we got 50,000 PCs, they're just coming up. This company was using um, SCCM at the time. And so it took us a while to figure out what the virus was. Then I came up with a solution of using Stinger, which is a McAfee self-contained um, EXE sort of like Microsoft's removal tool built into Windows. So we deployed that to the workstations and um, we started seeing that it was clearing the issue. I was also able to script um, detection because this, this virus was actually putting a folder under the app data user's profile. So I also wrote a script in SCCM to return which machines were infected, get them scanned and get them cleaned off. This took probably three to four hours just to get a, a solution um, simple enough to uh, detect, mark the machines that were infected so we can come back and touch them later and then get them cleaned. So as we started down this road, um, the test machine that I had that was infected, after clearing it, 15 minutes later, it was infected again. And so if you're a security person or you, you deal with you know, operations, what you'll, what you, your, with your experience, what you'll see is that if I use the antivirus or antivirus solution to clean the machine, how is the virus coming back? So after researching for probably an hour, this company, they write their own software and that's what they sell. And what happened was their software requires local admin. So someone in their infinite wisdom decided that they would put domain user in the local administrators group. And if, if you don't know what that is, um, basically domain user is every user in the environment. So basically, if you go to your local administrators group on your PC, if you double click in there, you'll see accounts. Any accounts in that group will have admin rights on that PC. So in a 50,000, computer environment, everyone was an admin on 50,000 PCs. So as you can see, that's a big issue. After this, so basically we were clearing the machines, but because everyone had admin rights on every machine, the machines were just getting reinfected. So we were just going in this big circle. And um, after about two or three days of trying to get this situated, they did not want to remove um, local users from the admin groups because it would take a long time to script and it was just a lot of backlash. At the end of the day, um, for this company, we had to basically, you took us three and a half months to re-image every single machine and reconfigure the local admin group for the local user. So step in with Tanium. Um, if we would have had Tanium um, during this time, this situation would have potentially never happened we have a solution that we called impact, which allows you to look across your environment, look across security groups and see um, if someone was to take a specific account, how could they move laterally? Okay. And this is a free solution that we provide with our base um, install. And what this company would have picked up is that every user is a, is a, every user is an admin on every PC. And when I say every PC, even their executives. So to give you a um, scenario, I'm Jeff, the, the CEO is Stephanie. I'm able to UNC to her PC and peruse all of her files and she would never know a thing. That is a very big and very bad security risk. And Tanium, just in its live response would have been able to show me this before it happened, right? 
And instead of it taking me, the reason why SCCM took so long is because SCCM does hardware inventory, everything's in the database. So to get new information, it can take up to seven days. With Tanium, I would have been able to ask a question and get it back in seconds, okay? And when we were talking about the script and automation and all that, we could have done it probably in 30 minutes. I have a really big um, client that uh, right now has 100,000 endpoints. Um, when we had the, uh, the recent zero day, we were able to identify all servers, all workstations that were vulnerable and remediate them in under an hour. So you're talking 100,000 endpoints, checking to see if a certain DLL is on the PC. If it is, patch it, confirm that it patched, and um, come back. So just to give you a little um, a war story that I had to deal with and a new scenario where Tanium was very, our turnaround. And that's the one thing I will say about Tanium that's good is um, we've got a huge support team. And when I say that, um, we all work together. We're all in Slack, so I can ping anybody. And I mean, we have some really some real good experts. And so we are real time with anything. Um, the other pieces, I got my degree in computer science and that's kind of my, my, my love. So I love programming. The good thing at working at Tanium that I found is that you are not pigeonholed. So I'm what we consider a platform uh, operations SME, which means I, I mostly deal with patch and deploy. But recently we had an issue with patch and because I'm able to code, I was able to code a fix, give it to the developers, have them review it and get it implemented in the next update. So, you know, there's a lot of versatility. There's a lot of, um, uh, uh, you know, there's no like the sky's literally the limit. You can move anywhere you want to within the company. If you're interested in tech in a certain technology, you can sit with someone and get it. So it is completely that open. If I wanted to do programming and switch from ops, that's available to me. But I love what I do. Um, I love the help that I get. And uh, I hope you learned a lot from this story. Thank you, Jeff. All right. So you've now had the opportunity to hear a little bit more about what Tanium is, what we are as a product. Um, how it can be used. And now we want to kind of shift the conversation a little bit more and talk about what it looks like to have a career at Tanium. So I'm going to pass it over to Tom. Thank you, Stephanie. And thank you, Jeff, for sharing those stories with us. Uh, it's always interesting to hear what other people are dealing with around the company. Um, I want to take just a moment to give everyone just or to share my background and experience at TAM from both a leadership and engineering perspective. Um, so just a little bit about me. Uh, back in the day when I lived surrounded by housing composed of red brick and huge amounts of concrete, we saw problems on the basketball courts, right? Just how it was back then. At the time, those were big problems, or they seemed so. You know, ball was life, so to speak. And, and that was a time when I had some uncontested hang time. Now, today I still have the long hair. Uh, it's, a, it's a little tame now, but I still have the long hair. I speak a little bit differently, so my vernacular has changed. But deep down, I'm, I'm still the same old G. And uh, here at Tanium, I've had the pleasure of working with some of the industry's best and brightest to solve real problems, much bigger than I could have ever imagined on the basketball courts. So previously in my introduction, I mentioned that my role is sort of a dual hat. So to start, I'll share uh, a little bit about Tanium's Enterprise Services Organization. Uh, we shorthand that as ESO. So if you hear me say ESO, that's what I'm referencing. Um, within that organization, I work as a systems integration engineer 50% of the time, and I'm also a lead. So I'm in a leadership role the other 50% of the time. So just to give you some backstory or you know, a little bit more about ESO internally, because this is not uh, a component of the company that is seen externally. Um, ESO's mission is to empower and enable our customers by providing world-class technical resources and services to drive the full realization of the Tangent platform and its capabilities. And, you know, you're probably wondering, what does this mean day to day? So I'm going to give you a little bit of an idea what this looks like, you know, whenever you're in a role or, you know, supporting customers. Uh, basically, when a customer needs a Tanium expert operator, we get summoned. We go out, we embed ourselves with a customer, 
We work alongside executives, senior engineers, and key stakeholders to assist their company in getting the most value out of the Payium platform. Requirements for success, they go well beyond technical abilities and include exemplary, exemplary interpersonal skills and a high degree of professionalism. They, they want us to show them the Tanians, so to speak, and, and, and show them we shall, or at least that's what we, we aim to do. Now, as an integrations engineer or a systems integrations engineer is a full title, I'm the expert at operating the Tanium platform and Tanium is uncontested in data fidelity. After all, we're a real-time visibility solution when it comes to endpoint management, and customers may want to take that and, you know, take the data they get from Tanium and pump it over to another system. My role is to help shape the glue between the Tanium platform and the third-party solution. This does require coding and programming skills and deep technical knowledge. Now, you never know what you're going to run into in the wild. You know, every environment is unique. Customers, they, they use open source software, sometimes off the shelf software. It's always going to depend and we have to be very flexible and again, highly capable professionals. Now, in some cases, we may be tasked with taking out a competitor's product. And in that case, we provide whatever is necessary to take the data from that old legacy solution or product, what have you, and move it over into the Tanium platform. Now, this will come with the need to assist the customer in developing the operation, operating procedures that are based more on the Tanium way, so to speak, because a unified endpoint management solution is relatively new to the industry and Tanium is leading the way. Now, uh, I'm gonna switch over a little bit and talk more about what you could do with and you know, being kind of a people manager. Um, again, I work in ESO and I am one of the primary hiring screeners. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll switch off that, that engineer hat and put on the, the lead hat. So leads are responsible for growing and supporting their teams. And this involves a good bit of interviewing and mentoring. So when I'm not working as a systems integration engineer supporting customers, I'm helping develop my, my employees, my people, and, and whoever. You know, anyone that can learn from me, I also try to learn from them. So I welcome everyone. At Tanium, our strength comes from our collective differences. And before the start of each interview, I make clear that the one-on-one -on -one interview between me and the candidate is simply a conversation, an opportunity to get, a, to get a glimpse of the person. We're not looking for every candidate to be made from the same mold. We're looking for people with the potential to produce outstanding outcomes. There's no defined trait list, uh, nor simple identifiers for this type of character. And so when I have that conversation with them, you know, getting to know them as a person. We're seeking people that aren't afraid to make mistakes when tackling technology challenges. You know, you, you, like uh, we mentioned earlier and what Jeff kind of hit on, you just never know what you're going to face. Uh, these persons, they must be willing to uh, own the outcome, right? Whenever they're going after that challenge, we want them to own the outcome, whether it's good or bad. And as a member of leadership, you know, we recognize that the journey to making our customers successful may require some trial and error. So, you know, of course, take precautions, measure twice, but never fear the potential of a mistake because we can learn from our mistakes and we all, we all want to fear them. So to give you a little bit of, you know, context of, of how I, you know, see this, um, when I was sitting at the console and my first customer, you know, reading over a request to execute with three quarter millions of endpoints reporting into the Tanium instance, uh, you can bet that my first time I felt a great deal of hesitation. You know, uh, a very key stakeholder, high ranking individual comes over and uh, we need to know what this is right now. What does it look like in our environment? And I'm sitting at the helm, again, three quarter million endpoints. This is not an exaggeration. This is uh, one of the world's most, or excuse me, one of our country's most sensitive networks, a globally distributed complex network. And, you know, I have to be very cautious in how I you know, take actions. Well, I I just had to make it happen. I had to get over that. And, you know, what if I make a mistake or oops, right? As a lead, we've been in the seat. There's nothing in this industry that can fully prepare you for managing and securing endpoints at the speed and scale of Tanium. However, we do our absolute best to equip new hires when they're, you know, coming into their first days. 
And you're probably wondering, you know, what, what does that entail? Well, when a candidate comes in for the first time and they're offered an accepted position, we don't just throw them in front of a customer. Uh, we have what's known as enablement. Uh, for most physicians, this is an eight-week period in which uh, they, they come in and they're collected as a, a cohort, uh, a little small team. Uh, together, they're sent through training and then a little bit more training. And, and then when we're done with that, a little bit more training. And it's rigorous. And, and having been someone that's experienced and helped shape that program, I like to call it the fire hose because you have to come up to speed from, you know, you're taking your experience and your background and learning the Tanium way all the way through and it's a lot to cover it's a lot we have a very powerful and robust platform now uh, from a mentoring perspective as a lead uh, what's beyond enablement well as leads we're in the trenches too right and we know it can be scary joining a support team and entering the environment for the first time uh, we have first-hand technical experience and understanding that kind of shape our decision making the trials and errors that i endured through my own experiences can help guide and springboard other professionals. As a mentor, my ultimate goal is to take those that are under my wing and grow them into professionals that excel even beyond my own achievements. This is something I do both internal to Tanium and as an instructor of ethical hacking and cyber system security at a state university. So I do give back to the industry in, in my spare time. Now I'm gonna conclude, um, or kind of kind of sort of conclude with, uh, you probably noticed or for those that did notice, um, you know, I, I didn't mention managing people as part of my normal day to day. Uh, we want people to own the customer engagement whenever they come into a role. We provide the left and right limits and any necessary resources for success. And from there, the individual is responsible for their piece of the support model. Having a dozen direct reports and trying to juggle a dozen different customer engagements as a lead wouldn't or doesn't scale very well. When I'm hiring candidates or screening candidates and bringing new people in. We, we, we trust those people, we keep them accountable, and we work together to win as a team. Now, a lot of that is, we're talking a whole lot about work, but there's also some extracurricular activities. You know, um, we do get together as, as teams. COVID has made that a little bit difficult, but it's still a thing that we do. Um, but uh, whenever we're able to meet as a team, we always have a good time and again, learn from each other. So uh, that's all I have for my piece of the talk. And thank you guys for listening. All right, thank you, Tom. Um, so I know that we have a lot of questions coming up in the um, sidebar. I'm gonna go ahead and hand it to John to talk about some opportunities in Terminal Titanium, and then we will circle back to those questions. So keep them coming, because we're gonna go through all of them in just a second. John, the floor is yours. Cool, thank you. All right, so yeah, we've talked a little bit about um, kind of the day-to-day -day and some of the roles at Tanium. So what's it like to be in security engineering at Tanium? Uh, so what do we do? What do we do on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, primarily our major focus is really to build, secure, attack, and automate. Um, so let's start out who we are on the team. Uh, we're really just a bunch of passionate hackers, tinkers, builders, researchers, analysts, engineers, and of course, we're all self-proclaimed nerds. Um, you know, we really, we, all of us that are on the team have really gotten into security over the years, and it's something that we're genuinely passionate about. We really, we really enjoy the, the challenge and the difficulty of it and, you know, solving these problems that uh, can be quite complex. And, at times can be kind of stressful. And so how do we, you know, how do we do that? How do we go about solving these problems at scale? How do we go about protecting, you know, a $9 billion company like Tania? How do we do that? So first uh, we, we build a lot. Um, we leverage Tanium as much as we possibly can internally. The tool is amazing as you've seen today with that great demo, uh, you know, there's a lot of functionality and flexibility in what we can do uh, by inspecting endpoints monitoring for things that are going on, figuring out exactly what the status of our environment looks like at any point in time, and understanding what do we need to do to build to make this better? What do we need to improve on? What do we need to augment? Uh, and so we do a lot of internal tool building um, for our security engineers, analysts, and operations folks. Uh, you know, we build uh, libraries to interact with third-party systems and APIs and other integrations to integrate Tanium with other products and services. 
Um, that is uh, something that we've, everybody on the team has actually had a lot of fun doing. Uh, we have a collection of tools that we've built now. We've started to share them out uh, with other engineering orgs within Tanium uh, and IT and some other folks that are getting some use out of that. Things like automating, you know, creating tickets and, and, and doing context enrichment to allow humans to, to, to do the important things and to, to let computers do the tedious and time consuming things. Um, and a lot of that is focused on uh, uh, Python. Uh, we do a lot of Python development. So if there's any folks out there that, that write Python or that you know, uh, enjoy coding challenges, things like that, you would honestly fit right in on, uh, on the engineering, security engineering team at Tanium. Uh, we just love to create things, whether it's in Tanium or outside of Tanium, we love to create. Um, and you know, of course, as a security team, really one of the things that we're primarily focused on is securing and defending. So we're responsible for uh, making sure that all of our employees stay safe and secure, that our customers' data, uh, wherever applicable, stay safe and secure, and that we do the best job that we possibly can uh, to address the, the huge challenge of modern hacking. Um, it's incredibly difficult to, uh, you know, to be on the blue team and, and to ensure that you check all the boxes at any given point in time. You know, the saying goes, you know, you, an attacker really only needs to succeed once to win the game, right? So our goal is to try to figure out how can we make that as absolutely hard, as hard as possible and how can we raise that bar as far up as we possibly can to make sure that, you know, nobody can just step right through the defenses and, and have an easy day of attacking team. Uh, we are going to make that the biggest challenge that they will face. So when it comes to that, how do we do that? We we use Tanium a lot. Um, we, you've seen some stuff uh, uh, in some of the modules earlier where we can gather information. Knowledge is power. Understanding what the state is of, of your environment at any given point in time and understanding what's installed on clients or what clients are doing what things, uh, what's happening in your environment is incredibly important. Without, without understanding the battlefields, you can't win the battle. Um, and, so, and so we really centralize and we leverage Tanium to do a lot of that inspection and, and introspection into our environment and organization and our endpoints. And then we also use Tanium to, uh, to do uh, the detection and response type stuff. So we have module threat response. Threat response helps us to understand when there are signals or things that are happening on an endpoint that we need to pay attention to, we need to take care of. Things like, you know, local administrators uh, being added or you know, uh, somebody that's trying to use common attack tooling, um, things that are, you know, a, a pretty good indicator that there's an incident happening that we need to look at. So we leverage uh, threat response to, to do those kind of things. Uh, and, and those tools are incredibly powerful and it's actually genuinely pleasant and fun to work with them. So great, we, we spend a lot of time securing and defending. But on the other side of that coin, we also attack our own infrastructure. We build it and then we break it. Um, because for several reasons, one, red teaming is just fun. Anybody that's done pen testing or attacking, sort of like a video game, you know, you, you, you have this challenge, you work really hard at it. And when you succeed and you, you get through and you, you're able to, you know, uh, circumvent something or you're able to get a flag or you're able to do something along those lines, it's genuinely fun and genuinely rewarding. So we have a really good time with attacking, but it's also really important to validate. It's important to validate that your controls that are in place are functional, that the things that you have to alert you and notify you that something bad is happening are actually working. And to make sure that those signals are high fidelity, we want to make sure that when something is triggered, that it really means something. If you have so many alerts going on and, and there's just things all over the place and you can't tell what's legitimate and what's not, it's incredibly hard to defend through all that noise. So what we try to focus on doing is when, when we build things, we want to attack it. We want to understand, do our do our detections work? Do our controls work? Do the preventions work? Do we have the limit? Are we limiting the scope? Are we able to get into the kill chain somewhere and, and, and stop the attack? And if we can't, then we need to learn from that. So we'll spend some time after, after a successful attack. We'll spend some time and we'll look at that. We'll have a root cause analysis. What went right? What went wrong? What can we do better next time? What features do we need? What things do we need to, to, uh, to do better? You know, and, and so we spend a lot of time understanding, you know, uh, both in practice and on the tabletop. 
So we also do tabletop exercises. Um, and those are actually pretty fun. You know, we sit down, we talk through a scenario, we invent a scenario and, you know, we'll have the, our security leadership there and, and they'll throw us some curveballs every now and then and they'll change up the scenario and it's really fun. It's, 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 uh, it's a good practice and it's a, it's a fun thing to do and it really helps us threat model uh, and, and effectively understand what our, our attacks may be and how we would defend them in the event that they happen because hopefully we don't get our practice by actually responding to live incidents. That's not how you want to get practice. We want to think about those things beforehand and play them out. Um, and then the biggest, one of the biggest pieces is in a modern world where you're talking about environments that have thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of endpoints, you cannot do that manually. You cannot manage those environments manually. You cannot secure them manually. It's just too much unless you have so many chairs full of so many people and you spend a ton of money on those people, you can't scale to that. So we really focus on automation to allow us to scale to that level, to be able to, uh, you know, some of the most important things that we automate are things that help enrich the context of, of an incident or an event. So say you have something going on, right? And you have maybe a, a detection of a malicious hash on an endpoint in your environment. and that may signal that there may be a piece of malware that, that is landed on a, on a device. Well, we have a human that is going to probably respond to that, right? And they're going to need to do some things to understand, okay, what is this? Um, they may go to virus total. They may submit the hash there. They may look and see, okay, it communicates to this domain. What is that domain? All these things take time. So if we can automate that stuff away and we can do the things that computers do best, making an API call to virus total, making an API call to domain tools or, or those other types of services, and we gather and we collate that information and then we present it to the human to let that person do what they do best. And that is to look at that information, to, to rationalize that, to understand what they're looking at and to make a decision based upon that context without having to go spend 15, 20, 30 minutes going around to all of those different services and trying to figure out what this thing that they're looking at is. So we really focus on automation. And the other thing with automation is it's a lot of things that we want to do on a reoccurring basis. We want things, you know, we have things that we want to do every day or, or you know, every hour or maybe even every minute. So we build tools that allow us to do that. So we have things that you know, within Tanium, we have things like uh, saved questions where we can ask questions across the envir environment every five, 10 minutes, however we want to schedule that. Those answers are, are reported and we can connect those things out to either a seam or to some custom things that we have that will look at the, those results and take action on those results. So it's just kind of the concept of a SOAR. You may have heard of that before. It's a security orchestration automation and response. And we want to do that as fast as we possibly can. We want that mean time to resolution to be as low as we possibly can. So that means automating things. So we do a lot of building. We do a lot of automation. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we have fun because life can't be all about breaches and patches and solving problems all the time. Those things are incredibly important and we take them incredibly seriously and we do our job and we do it to the best of our ability. And we continue to try to make ourselves better and to learn more about the environment and the infrastructure. And, but at the end of the day, we realize that, you know, we're all people, we, we want to have fun, we want to joke around, we want to laugh. And so we try to keep the mood on our team uh, positive. You know, we, we, we focus on finding positive people. Uh, we focus on finding, finding people that are going to, you know, have a good time while they're doing it and, and are not going to fly off the handle when things get a little bit stressful. Uh, we need to unwind, you know, a little bit. And so, so we, we laugh and we joke and we have fun. And we're always looking for people. So our security team has been growing consistently over the last year or so, um, and a couple years actually. And we're looking for more passionate people. We have a couple of roles open right now that you can find on the Tanium Careers website. Uh, we have, you know, some, some open entry uh, uh, level jobs for a security engineer as well as a senior security engineer. So we're looking for people that are primarily just really passionate about security. We're, we're looking for folks that are motivated, that 
that do this because they like it. Almost every one of us on the team has some kind of a home lab or, or somewhere where we, you know, play around with these things. We keep up with news. We, we, we have fun sharing information about new vulnerabilities that come up and diving into those things and really learning how they work. If that sounds like you, I want to talk to you. I, I would love to interview you folks and, and see if we can find some of those people that, uh, you know, really augment and, and build our team and, and bring some more of that passion and that, you know, that, uh, you know, that desire to, to create and to build and to learn and to attack and destroy sometimes because all of those things are fun. So if that sounds like you, please, please go to the career website, check us out, send in, send in a, a, you know, a resume and hopefully I will talk to you soon. Thank you very much for your time and I really, really appreciate the invite here and it's been uh, great to participate in this today. Thank you. Thank you, John. All right. Um, let's go ahead, Bella, to the next slide, please. Bella, you there? Okay, I'm going to start looking. I know that we've seen a lot of um, folks Q and a um, down, and, and I know that we've been answering some of these questions in the chat. Let me see if there's anything that has been left unanswered. Uh, and in the Q&A. All right, thanks, Bella. Um, so just to kind of wrap up our, our presentation portion of the webinar, um, who is Tanium? You all now have a better idea of what we are um, as a company, what the product does, who we are culturally at Tanium. Um, you know, to I think John and, and Tom hit on this, the hit the nail on the head on this, you know, we're very collaborative. Um, we like to say that we hire adults, so you get a certain level of autonomy at the company. Um, but where do we stand in the market? We are at 70% of the, the top retailers, 90% of the top US financial institutions, six branches of the US Armed Forces. And we are international. Like I mentioned, I focus on Latin America. So we have um, customers in Mexico, in Chile, in Argentina, actually not in Argentina, but we work with um, Latin America as well. We have um, customers in Japan and in, in Europe. Um, so we are a very well-established company that still gets to benefit from some of the agility of being a startup. Um, let's go ahead and jump to the next slide. If anyone, um, before we hand it over to talk specifically about the opportunities, if anyone has a question that they wanted to um, have answered, um, you know, like via the Zoom where we, we speak and answer, go ahead and put it again, either in the Q&A or in the um, chat window and just say, can you answer this live? And then we'll go ahead and take um, a stab at it. Marissa, hey. I'm gonna hand it over to you. Yeah, Stephanie, I'm gonna, um unmute the mics or at least allow folks to talk if they if they like so um, we can do those as well live any other questions that's perfect thank you so much dennis all right marissa the floor is yours thanks hey everyone so thanks again for showing up we appreciate it we just wanted to go over some of the opportunities here Again, my name is Marissa uh, and I recruit specifically for our enterprise services team. Um, I was lucky enough to meet Tom when he first started uh, actually in the Fort Ford and Georgia area. So if you are interested in working with Tom or on his team, he is one of our hiring managers. Feel free to check out our enterprise services engineer openings or our enterprise services systems integration engineer openings. Uh, and if you're interested in working or doing something similar to what Kofi or Jeff or Stephanie do, feel free to apply to one of our technical account manager openings. Um, both, as you saw, these teams do work pretty closely together. Um, so there's you know, not a whole lot of silo here. It's just more collaboration. Uh, and if you're interested in doing some security engineering work like what John had just explained, he does have an opening. So here is the, the link to it. I'll drop those in the chat as well so you can apply live. Uh, just to go over our internships, we do have several internships across the company available, um, enterprise services specifically. We just built one, so we have three more open. Uh, and I know that these positions are, are filling quickly. So please, if you're interested, email me your resume. Um, my email is right here in screen. It's marissa.fialobosatanium. Or you can email my colleague, Kiana, um, either way. Uh, we would love to help kind of navigate if you have any questions around our openings. Um, but that's 
that's the overview. Um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, email, or in the chat. Thank you. Did you say that software engineering internship was still open? Yes, I believe they do still have um, one or two more openings. Great. Um, Bella, will you go ahead to the next slide, please? At the end of, okay. Um, Marissa, do you want to go ahead and talk about the internship? Sure. So these are some of the internship highlights for those of you. I did get a couple questions on it. So it is a 10 week program and that the start dates for it are I believe in May and in June. And it's a really hands-on internship. So some things that you'll be doing will be training you on how to present and demo Tanium's capabilities. You'll actually get a Dell server as part of your hardware equipment as well as a laptop so that you can learn to write spin up Tanium instances, configure it, destroy it, and, and all of the above. Um, and all of these things that are pretty unique to Tanium uh, is that you, or I guess this internship, what makes it unique is that it is not just something that you're going to go in and shadow someone. You actually get to do something hands-on. So you get technical as well as soft skill training, since a lot of these opportunities are client facing afterwards. Um, there's a lot of interactive opportunities um, and the compensation uh, for the enterprise services uh, internship is $30 an hour plus $1,500 a month for a home office stipend uh, and the internship is remote. So, um, so the other internships are also remote, but I'm not sure if the comp is exactly the same, uh, but again, just feel free to send me a resume if you're interested and I will connect you with the recruiter in charge of those other teams uh, intern opportunities. Perfect, thanks Marissa. Mm -hmm. All right, so Great. that, sure, Daryl, go ahead. Excuse me, I was wondering Marissa, um, you mentioned that you will have internships available is this just for like the technical aspect of Tanium or is any of this like, for example, like an SDR position, like something in sales? I'm not sure if we have specifically SDR internships, but I know that there are some non-technical roles as well. I know marketing has a lot of opportunities available. So I can certainly dig into that a bit deeper. Just send me an email. Um, and if you want, send me over your resume. And once I find the right person, I will send your resume over. Marissa, I can actually jump in there as Thank well. Um, we are hiring across pretty much every single department at Tanium, both technical and non-technical. So we've got openings in sales, marketing, um, human resources, finance, as well as all of the technical positions mentioned. So if there's pretty much anything you're interested in, definitely check out our careers page. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. Thanks, Bella. All right, so that concludes the presentation part of this webinar. We are going to be here. We have about 15 minutes left to leave it open for questions. So we're happy to answer any questions that you have, whether it's on the technology, um, again, speaking on what it's like to work at Tanium, what our days to day look like, um, or specific opportunities. We are here and available to answer your questions. So feel free. You should be able to unmute now, as you've seen feel free to go ahead and unmute and ask away. Really quickly, um, I see that Ray Jarvis asked a question in the, the chat that I wanted to, to make sure we gave an answer on. Um, the, the question was, what are the skills needed to, to come in, right? Um, I kind of hinted at this during my talk, but we're not really looking for a candidate to be made from the, the same old, so to speak. Uh, we're not looking for another Tom. We're not looking for Jeff or another John. We already have them. They're here with us. Uh, there's no defined list of traits. Uh, we want passionate individuals that are always curious and looking for ways to influence change. And come as you are. The, your, your unique experience and background, you know, it's, it's, um, you, you know, it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. We're not just looking for that one person. Just if you're interested for a position, apply, and we'll interview you, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I want to echo that. Um, I think a lot of us on this call are part of the recruitment cycles and we do a lot of the technical panels and you'd be surprised. Um, you know, I think everyone, when you start applying for a new role, it's like, oh my gosh, I don't know X, Y, Z. Um, we started Tanium, you know, as a company that was maybe focused on one or two domains and Kofi showed you all the number of domains that we cross. 
there is no way that we're expecting you to be an expert in every single one of those domains. If you are, you should have your own company and name it like Brainium or something else because that's not a normal expectation. So we say that to say, um, you know, really, really uh, encourage you all to apply. Don't don't take yourself out the game before you get a chance to play. Um, and you know, a lot of times these technical interviews, as daunting as they may feel, we're rooting for you and we're you know trying to encourage you and, and show, have you show us where exactly your technical depth goes. Um, so we all feel that same pressure. Um, don't freak out. We really encourage you to apply. It's never a stump the chump kind of game that we play. Stephanie, can I, can I touch on that really quick? Yeah. Uh, so Stephanie has A1 uh, firsthand knowledge on this because uh, I actually talked to Stephanie when I was looking at Comic Titanium. Uh, it was literally, I was concerned because like, Stephanie's like, oh, hey, like Kofi, did, you know, we're looking for somebody with this information. I was like, I don't know if I have this per se, or I don't know if, you know, like if I qualify, right? Um, and I, I kept looking over it and I was like, you know what, I, I, I do have these skills or, or I can learn this, right? I'm really good at like picking things up as I go. And, um, you know, with that, like I went through the interview process. I um, mean, it was interview after interview and, and literally like, I was like, oh, I know, I, I know this, right? Or I know how to have this conversation, not necessarily specifically just on, you know, the, the Mac side of the house, but I can transfer this to Windows, right? And, and so that was one of my my, uh, my benefits with talking to Stephanie is like, I tried, I applied. And I mean, I, like Stephanie was saying, they were rooting for me, right? They like, okay, perfect. Like, you know, this is information that he can pick up or that, you know, he already has just in a different way. And, and so the sum of our differences really make us, you know, what, what Tanium is today. We're able to pick up from, from different places. I ping Jeff all of the time. I say, I need somebody that has like SCCM knowledge, right? Cause I don't know nothing about it, right? But I can ping Jeff and Jeff and say, all right, hey, this is how it works. So this is how I've seen it happen in the past. This is how you can apply this to your situation. So definitely, definitely encourage you all to apply. I definitely encourage you to, you know, find out more about Tamium. We're here for you if you have any questions and we'll be more than glad to make sure you guys are taken care of. Um, I, I guess. For the presentation. Uh, huh? I said, thank you very much for the presentation. It's been very informative. I need to get back to my other job right now, but I'll be in touch with you all. Great. Thanks, David. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll listen in, but I'll mute at this point. All right. And Nakira, I think you had a question. Oh, well, thanks, Stephanie. You said my name right. That's the first. <laughs> um, so I was, I'm super like, you guys have me hooked. I'm super like, I, I want to be involved. I really do. I even you know like someone from your team where it's like, I was like, hey, man, please, like, this company is, it seems kind of nice. It seems really cool. Um, the thing with me is I love technology. I'm very hands on with it, though. Um, I can learn a lot of um, coding and stuff but I didn't know if you guys had any like hands-on um, positions, if that makes sense. I can speak to that too. I can, I'll speak to it. I'll speak. Wait, just to clarify real quick, um, are you speaking hands-on like technical? Yes, yes. So like right now I, um, I'm like a, a repair technician. I, I work on like computers and phones and, um, and you know, gaming consoles and stuff, but like I help them operate and I can help people you know, like navigate problems through them, but um, I, I really do like being like like a, a mechanical engineer type. You're but I'm also about the hardware side. Specifically. Yes, yes. So, are you looking for hardware, or are you just when you say hands on? Is it like the interaction that you're talking about? The yeah, interaction, yes. Okay, so I'm a TAM, and we have you know three different levels. But um, from day one, you are given what we call a DOM which is a, uh, a, a physical Dell workstation that we use to, um, to simulate environments. And you will be handling, if you come in as a ATAM, TAM, or DTAM accounts. So I am hands-on with all of my clients. Like um, the one thing I say Tanium does different <laughs> from my background is I've, I've worked at a lot of, you know, again, Fortune 100 companies and, you know, you, you call Microsoft and you always get someone new. You got to answer like a hundred questions, 10 times over. The way we work at Tanium is that you're assigned an account. You run that account as if it's your own. You know, when they have issues, you are the first in line. There's generally two people assigned to an account. And so it will be hands-on. I mean, the expectation is that you will have a full lab. You can replicate um, you know, there's a lot of hands-on. I mean, so again, so I handle ops, but I've helped out on security issues. I've helped out on operations issues. 
and you know we'll have what we call shadows so you can just sit in the meeting and listen in and if you have a side of that you can apply it so it is always hands-on i mean like literally i help code some of the um changes that we need when a problem com comes up that's why i'm saying tanium as a whole is really different than any other environment because generally everybody's siloed but i can literally play ping a dev in patch and say hey I came across this issue, uh -huh. um, I, I noticed it, and I came up with some code. Can you use it? Sure, send it in, we'll dev it, and put it in the next fix. That answers my question, thank you. Because I, I love like you know contributing and helping out to you, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll add here, um, the folks on the call were in three different kind of areas of Tanium, and there are more like development, software development. Um, so, um, Kofi, Max, and myself are on the customer facing side that's called the technical, like the TAM organization. We're the ones um, that sometimes will do pre sales. It's kind of changing a little bit in Tanium, but um, we do take ownership of the accounts, like Kofi, or like Maxon just said. Now, we have also the ESO org, that's our services organization. That's where Tom sits. Um, and they are extensions of the customers that we work with, right? So they help with integrations, they help with actually adding services and adding value to customers specifically. They're a little bit more involved and they oftentimes, depending on the customer, might get creds to the customer environment, might get um, a laptop to that environment because they're extensions of that team, even though they're employees of Tanium. The last group that we have here um, was John's team. John's team is internal to Tanium, but also uses Tanium. So it's like Tanium at Tanium, but it's um, you know security engineering internal to a security and ops organization, if that makes sense. Additionally, we do have dev roles and things like that. And I say that to say, all of us are very hands-on. Um, we're maybe not there sitting and, and um, taking apart hardware. I think the most that I've had to do is set up my DOM with some extra RAM. But that being said, like if you have some use cases that you want to play it with and prove out and they require getting in there, um, if it adds value to Tanium, we encourage that kind of curiosity and creativity if, and innovation. Um, but all of us on this, this call that have, have spoken so far are very technical, very hands on. Yeah, and to add on to that, we also have the IT support area of the organization and the engineering area too, who do actually handle devices and, and will go through, you know, uh, devices with issues if you're looking to do some of that kind of repair stuff. Keep an eye open for things that are opening up in the IT support area. Um, those folks actually do work hands on with, with physical units. And when it comes to code and contributing code, I think pretty much everybody at Tanium is going to have their hands in some kind of code somewhere along the road some at some point. So if you like to develop and create, then you've got lots and lots and lots of options. And if you have decided that you don't want to develop and create, you can also, as long as you read code, you don't have to sit there and, and write a ton of code. You can be more for like responsible for delivering um, those solutions and you know um, working with customers with that. So some for everybody. All righty. Yeah, um, no, I wanted to. Could I ask one? Oh, I'm sorry. Go on. Oh, I was just going to chime in there. There is a lot of coding to go around, so to speak. And within ESO, our enterprise services engineer roles, there is no absolute coding requirement for that role. But it is kind of a good blue chip to have, as Stephanie just mentioned, because there's a lot of ways you can help improve and bring value to the product. Um, so if you're interested in like operating Tanium embedded with the customer, you know, hands on, those enterprise services engineers, that's what they do. They literally go into the customer environment, augment, and work along with their staff and in meetings and whatnot. And um, but no coding is absolutely required for that role. Thanks. Could I ask a question in regards to the coding part? Yep. So I remember um, Python was mentioned earlier. Do you, does Tanium use Python 2 or is it more updated to be around Python 3? Uh, Python 3, please. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, Python 2 is EOL, and at this point, our focus is on uh, creating awesome Python 3 content. Cool, cool, awesome. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I wanted to touch base more on the TAM role and what it looks like um, in what I was told was 10 weeks of training initially upon hire, being hired on, and then afterwards when you're actually um outside of the training window like what what does that look like um i guess the reason i ask is because the position is fully remote 
Um, I'm not used to doing a fully remote position. I, I think I like the structure of being, um, as someone said earlier, like more hands-on and like being in like that environment. But um, I guess what, why Tanium appeals to me is because what I got from the recruiter was you guys are well structured and there's um, you're never going to feel alone on an island is what you used. Um, so could anyone tell me more about that? Like the day-to-day -day of, um, of uh, someone in a Tamil? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, John. Um, so are, you, wanna, you wanna hear about the training part or just the day-to-day? Both basically just like what the differences would be like what would uh what would you do what would you learn in the training and then what would an everyday type schedule be for someone um in the Tamil once they complete training okay so training for us uh it, it's kind of different um so when I started I got my laptop and I went to training in California we have a, a whole week and that's um, basically, you know, um, a hands-on class where you go through everything Tanium. How does it work? How to contact people? What our solution is as a whole? Um, the position you're in, you actually meet with um, potentially the owners of the company at some point. Mm -hmm. We have actual um, programmers, the, the actual core programmers. I keep forgetting their name, Stephanie, but um, you get to meet them as well. So it's a full week of, of training. Then we have courses you have to take um, overall. So it's generally about two weeks, I would say, of training. Max, and let me jump in here because it's actually changed a lot since we were oh. on. It's a lot different. So um, when Jeff and I started, we were still very much in the startup phase. So we had some kind of procedure around it, but it was very much educate yourself um, to an extent. Now, where we're at now, it's a very um, structured kind of cohort type of, of enablement. For, so essentially what it is, is when you start, you're gonna start at the same, around the same time as a number of different engineers or um, you know, folks in different parts of the organization. There are introductory level baseline courses that are expected of most employees at Tanium, and those are gonna be just foundational knowledge about the product itself. And then depending on the role that you're gonna be into, you're gonna be put into a cohort with, for example, an ESO, and I'm sure Tom, you can probably shed more light here, but the ESO will have their cohorts where this is your, your battle buddies, we call them. And so um, basically this is your team, that you're you're in communication with like 24 seven or normal working hours, we'll say, um, and that you're in communication with them. And so these are the folks that have started with you. You're gonna be able to ask them questions as your peers and things like that. Now we are heavily dependent um, and we have been on Slack for years since I've been here. And I'll tell you 95% of my day is like, you know, on Slack um, and you still feel that, that um, you still build that rapport with your team via Slack. I know it, it sounds, like counterintuitive, but we've been remote as TAMs since before COVID. So I was actually, I just moved to Los Angeles, but I was in Atlanta with Max and, and Kofi. And, you know, we'll sit here on channels and give each other a hard time. And then if, and when we had a chance to meet up, we would. So you're still getting that, that personal uh, relationship building via Slack. We also do Zoom calls pretty frequently. And within your cohort um, for enablement and your teams, you, most of the time you're gonna have your video enabled. So you'll, you'll still build that community. Now, in terms of ongoing enablement, when you're actually like fully operationalized or fully enabled, that comes down to um, a lot of it's gonna be self-led, right? You are the only one that knows what you don't know. At the same time, you don't know what you don't know, but it'll come up as you're working with different customers, as you're working on different projects. And the beautiful part of Tanium is as you start identifying maybe these gaps, I mentioned that my background is security and it sounds like nobody except for Maxon loves SCCM on this call. So I might go and ping Maxon real quick to, to explain to me a little bit about how Microsoft is doing patching via SCCM. And um, you know the culture at Tanium is if I know something and I can help you learn it, then I'm gonna jump on a Zoom and explain it to you. So we're very collaborative. Um, I think enablement is, is only, has only ever been a problem if um, you're more dependent on somebody giving you like a textbook to learn, it's very self-led, but the resources are, there's so many resources to get you the knowledge that you need. Um, and you are, you do have that very structured learning at the beginning. It's about 10 weeks of enablement, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tom or Marissa. Uh, eight weeks. 
eight weeks. So it's about eight weeks of an ailment. So you do have a lot of that. Like that's basically, I think like a, a quarter at, at, at a, like one of the UCs. But um, after that, then you have the resources at Tanium through our wiki, through our docs, through just speaking to the rest of your team to get enabled. I know we're just over time. Tom, did you want to go pipe in there a little bit? Oh, I, I kind of covered most of it in, in my talk. You know, the, the cohorts, as Stephanie just mentioned, you're, you're a group, you build rapport with each other and you're, you're going to eventually, once you're fully enabled, go to different areas of the company. However, you know, you've built those relationships. You have those people that you, you kind of work with through over the eight weeks and um, you can learn a lot from each other and it, it kind of helps with the experience and that's by design. Um, and, and again, I refer to it as the fire hose because there is a lot to cover in those eight weeks, but it, it's, it's definitely a fun ride, especially coming in and learning the platform. Cool. Thank you guys for covering everything. No problem. Thanks everyone. I think um, Dennis, if you want to um, wrap us up. Sure. Thank you guys for uh, attending. I appreciate the Tanium team and the attendees for being so attentive and uh, interested i am learning stuff um you know i might throw my resume in the ring too you know it's uh you know pretty um pretty compelling conversation so uh if anybody does have any follow-up questions feel free to send them um, our way uh we will be posting the replay of this um presentation on the blacks and technology foundation website so be sure to check it out and if um uh, the Tanium team has any parting words, uh, feel free to uh, say them now or forever hold your peace. Okay. All right. Otherwise, um, we will see you guys at our next event. Thanks, everyone. Have a good rest of the day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Dennis. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care.